In my recent video about Thailand's RTAF-5 experimental trainer, I told how the need for that aircraft had been largely removed by the purchase of the RFB fan trainer for the Royal Thai Air Force. And that led to a fair number of you asking, What is this? Well, I'll tell you. West German-based Rhein Flugzeugbau is a sort of small and out there aero company that we love at Military Matters. Set up in the 1950s, they started by building one-off pusher aircraft of their own design, before moving on to experimenting with ducted fan propulsion systems in the 1960s. In 1970, they thought that they recognised a potential market for a new innovative trainer aircraft that used this design style and this idea formed the fan trainer. As fighter aircraft became more and more complex and expensive, so did advanced military trainers, with aircraft like the Northrop T-38, the Mitsubishi T-2, and even the Sepicat Jaguar, all being developed because of the increasing leaping capabilities that new pilots had to go through to become competent to fly. This shunted the capability gap further back down the training schedule, with the leap between pilots qualifying on small piston engine basic trainers to now literally advanced jet trainers becoming an issue, which in turn required another class of jet trainer aircraft to be developed to bridge that gap, creating aircraft like the Dornier Alpha Jet and the British Aerospace Hawk. But RFB figured the solution might be to build an aircraft that would combine the cheap operating costs of the basic trainer with the handling characteristics of a jet, which would mean the jump for rookie pilots would be less jarring. It would also allow air forces to potentially reduce the need to maintain different types of trainer aircraft for the qualification process. To do this, they essentially created an aircraft with a tandem two-seat cockpit, which was apparently modelled on that of the Alpha Jet trainer, but with the power plant being a ducted fan propeller behind the cockpit in the middle of the aircraft. This helped replicate the same flying characteristics as a jet aircraft, with the weight of the power plant being in a mid position instead of at the front of the aircraft as with other trainers, which led to handling characteristics closer to those of surface jet aircraft. And it did this at less than the tenth of the operator and fuel costs of a jet trainer, though admittedly it was much slower than such, but still gave rookie pilots an idea of how a jet would handle right from the start of his basic flying training. I mean, honestly, this sounds like a pretty good idea. Despite that, their primary intended potential customer, the German Luftwaffe, didn't indicate any interest. So instead, in 1973, RFB built a civilian touring version, which also served as a proof of concept, the RFB fan liner. This created enough interest that the German Ministry of Defence decided that there might be something worth exploring with the concept, and they commissioned the construction of two prototypes in 1975, of the new fan trainer. The new aircraft did indeed look more like a jet than a standard propeller aircraft. Construction was mixed, with plastic and fiberglass being used for the wings and much of the cockpit, while metal was used around the engine due to the heat generated. Additionally, the aircraft had a retractable tricycle landing gear, again, an advanced feature for a basic trainer, but one which any fast jet pilot would soon have to get used to. RFB's vision for the fan trainer was that one largely common airframe could be fitted with different wing sizes and more powerful engine fits in order to accommodate basic or advanced training programs. This would allow pilots to progress in a single type that they became increasingly familiar with, meaning that as they moved on to aircraft of increasing performance, the consequent leap was far less difficult as they were essentially familiar with the type throughout most of their training. The two initial aircraft built for the German government fulfilled this concept. The first prototype, which flew in October 1977, was fitted with twin Wankel rotary engines coupled together that produced 150 horsepower each, and had larger wings for better stability for newer pilots. This was intended to replace basic piston engine trainers in Air Force service, providing pilots with their first powered flight training. The second version, which flew in late May 1978, was fitted with a more powerful Allison 250 turboshaft that produced 420 horsepower and was also used by the German military's new B0105 helicopter. This version also had shorter wings for better acrobatic capability, again in line with the idea that this would act as a more advanced trainer. 
1978, both aircraft were handed over to the Luftwaffe, where they were flown off in competition against the American Beach T-34C Turbo Mentor and the Swiss PC-7, with the winner to be selected to replace Germany's existing Piaggio P-149 basic trainers. And the fan trainer basically won, proving not just good enough against the other better known aircraft, but much cheaper to purchase and operate. Despite the second prototype being lost in a crash while on a routine transfer flight, the German government began preliminary negotiations to build 30 turbine engine aircraft. Unfortunately for RFB, the German Air Force would a year later decide that they would have to continue to use the Piaggio for a few more years for cost reasons, as much of their pilots' advanced training was already conducted in the United States anyway. But feedback from the trials and additional suggestions convinced RFB that they could produce the fan trainer in a format that would attract sufficient orders to be worthwhile, and two basic models were built, the fan trainer 400 and 600. The 400 dispensed with the complicated and troublesome twin Wankel engines and settled on the Allison Model 250 C20 turbine engine that produced 420 horsepower. While the 600 used the more powerful C30 that had an output of 650 horsepower. With this, the FT600 had a top speed of around 260 miles per hour and an endurance of more than 4 hours. As said, much slower than a jet trainer, but far cheaper to operate. In line with the concept of the aircraft effectively being modular for ease of construction, two differing requirements, the two models shared 92% commonality in their parts. RFB also needed to alter the fan to a five-bladed design instead of the original seven and make some other changes to the drive system because the aircraft was reputedly extremely loud. Sources are mixed as to how successful this ultimately was, but the concept of an almost universal trainer found appeal with the Thai Air Force, and in 1982, they ordered 31 Model 400s to be their new basic trainer, and 16 of the 600s to provide training to pilots going on to eventually fly the RTAF's new F5E fighters, with options on another 26. The cockpit of the Thai FT-600s were correspondingly altered to be more in line with that of the F5E, including with ejection seats fitted. The deal saw the first two made in Germany and then the rest assembled in Thailand from kits, with aircraft starting delivery in 1984 and entering Thai service from 1987 onwards. The tyres also had the fibreglass wings of their FT-400s changed to a metal construction to better stand the tropical weather in that country. Unfortunately, this proved tricky to accomplish, and as a result the FT-400s would actually be later into service than the FT-600s with the Royal Thai Air Force, and proved problematic throughout what turned out to be a short service life. Regardless, the sale inspired RFB to additional marketing attempts, including a proposed Fan Trainer 1000 for Paraguay that would have actually been a light attack aircraft. Though that came to nothing, RFB persisted, launching another bid to get a contract from the West Germans in the mid-1980s, which, alas, again failed. At this point, RFB decided that perhaps they should see about moving into the jet trainer field and teamed up with Rockwell International to take a crack at the US military's JPATS program. This led to the creation of the Rockwell Ranger 2000, an aircraft based off the fan trainer, but now with a conventional jet engine propulsion. This too was unsuccessful, but it didn't really matter because in 1992, RFB shut down, and that largely ended the attempts to sell the fan trainer, and indeed the limited service it was seeing. As the Thais concerned that they would no longer be able to get parts for the type, and able to buy surplus German Alpha jets cheaply with the end of the Cold War, retired the aircraft. But the story of the fan trainer isn't quite done yet. Three are still flying, and do appear at air shows in Europe on occasion. But in addition to this, a new company formed in 2010, Fanjet Aviation, who purchased all the rights and manufacturing equipment associated with the aircraft. And they are quite keen to restart production of the fan trainer, potentially improved with glass cockpit instrumentation, if new customers can be found. So watch this space, because the fan trainer isn't a completely forgotten aircraft quite yet. I hope you enjoyed the video, please share, like and subscribe, and maybe check out some of these videos blobbing up on the screen right now. Have a good one everybody, and I'll catch you next time.